Bruchim Aboim. Thank you for coming. Tonight's lecture, the lecture is um, going to be on treasure. And in order to get treasure in the world, you have to uh, dig, get a little dirty. Uh, treasure is not something that generally is on the surface. It comes with uh, forethought. It comes with effort, again, on your part. It's not something that falls in your lap. And the treasure I'm talking about tonight is parents, especially older parents. If uh, someone has the blessing to be able to have parents that are alive, and uh, it comes with a challenge. It really comes with a challenge, especially today. They tell a, a cute story of a rabbi that was called to a nursing home. And um, this gentleman was in the nursing home, asked to speak to the rabbi. And he said to the rabbi that, uh, you're friends with my son. And my son only comes and sees me once every two weeks. So it's, it's really not enough. Uh, if you could please talk to him and see if you could get him to come more often, I would really appreciate it. And the rabbi nodded and said he would see what he can do. And the rabbi went to go see the uh, father, probably the, sons, the son of this uh, father. And um, when he went to see him, again, they were, he had known him for years, and he said to uh, the son, he said, uh, you know, Harry, I just came from your father. And he's complaining that you're not seeing him enough. And Harry turns to the rabbi and he says, Rabbi, I'm 78 years old. I mean, what does my father want from me? He's 102. You know, I mean, I'm an old man. You know, this, this hurts me and that hurts me. I just don't have the strength and I don't have the time to be able to come see him. So it's an interesting dilemma that as we get older, our parents get older. And you have old people taking care of old people at times. And this is a reality, it's a nice reality, but it's still a problem. So how do we, how do we really look at parents? And, and why is it that the fifth commandment is to honor your parents and respect them? Interestingly enough, it doesn't say love them. It says to love God. But it doesn't say to love our parents. Just respect and honor. And as much as we see, it's really not natural for us to love our parents, even though for the most part we do, but it's more of what we call hakarat tov. It's gratitude. That if someone, words from the heart go to the heart, someone loves you so much, and parents definitely love children. That's inbred with all, with all people, not only people, but also the animal kingdom. Where does this come from? From first man, Adam. When Adam was created, he had no parents, but he did have children. And his father, so to speak, was God Almighty himself. So there was a natural love for God and a natural love for children. We love our children even before they're born. We love them before we know what they're going to be. And it's an amazing relationship. And even animals will give up their lives protecting young. So how do we see, if you're fortunate enough to have parents that are still alive, how do we, how do we deal with this? There's a story told of Reb Zusha. Abzusha was a great tzaddik, lived many years ago. And before he revealed himself to the world, he was walked. He went through the world traveling as an itinerant beg beggar and a group of beggars. And whenever he would go, he would try to see what he could do to help the spirits of the people, pray for them. And he came to this one town, and as was the custom, all the poor people stayed in the back of the synagogue. And this was Friday night. And the shamus, the sexton, would then go to the back and he would tell people which home to go to to have their Friday night Shabbat meal. And as he was telling people where to go, when he looked around, there was only one person left. It was Reb Zusha. And uh, the shamus said to Reb Zusha, okay, you'll come home with me. Now Reb Zusha had a scraggly beard and he wore a tattered coat and he had a rope around his waist. He looked like a real poor person, a little strange. And when the shamus took him to his house and was preparing to get ready to serve the meal, Reb Zusha was sitting at the table and he was kissing himself. And the shamus looks over Reb Zusha and just shakes his head. Reb Zusha sees him 
And Mazusha smiles at the shamus and he says, I know you think I'm crazy, but you have to understand that an esrig stands on a tree all year and nobody pays any attention to it, except on Sukkot. Then for that week, people hold it and admire it and kiss it and show their friends, make a blessing on it. It becomes very special. And he turned to the shamus and he said, I'm a nobody and a nothing. But you brought me home to fulfill the mitzvah of hachnosis orachim, of taking in guess, which makes me a dover shebegedusha, an article of, that's holy. And that's really the important lesson of how we need to look at our parents. They are a dover shebegedusha. They are a holy object that we do mitzvot on. And by showing kibbutz of aim, as we fact one of the only two mitzvahs, it's vote in the Torah that we have reward for that we know about is honoring parents for one of them. Long life. A good life. And not only that, you have children that are watching you. So that that example that you show towards your parents is the example that they'll see for themselves how they should treat their parents. There's a cute little thing I remember a bazooka comic book years ago where a father was telling his son, look at these gray hairs. They're there because you are such a bad child. You brought all these gray hairs on my head. And the child came back and said to his father, you must have been an awful child. Look at grandpa and uh, all the gray hairs. But the truth of the matter is, is that it's really a wonderful mitzvah. I've, we've been blessed. My mother-in-law has lived with us for the last nine years. And it's such a joy to see her happy, see her laughing, See, you're enjoying life. There are so many old people. I go to retirement homes. And these people are really at the bus stop waiting for the angel of death. And no one should do that. No one. At the same time, when we deal with older parents, we have responsibilities, we have obligations. And many people walk around with a sense of guilt that no matter how much they see their parents, Somehow it isn't enough. And you really need to strike a balance. And it's a hard thing to do. You can't be there all the time. At the same time, you need to be there. And today we're fortunate you can call. And that shows that you care. But what we need to do is get a little out of our comfort zone. But not to the point that it, it drives us crazy. Because some people do. That they're so OCD about the whole thing. That that mitzvah becomes almost a sin in the sense that it starts to destroy them. So one needs to find the balance of what it is. And we also need to know that this idea of this this holy object, there are parents who suffer from dementia, Alzheimer's. And I think that they don't know because they're in that condition. And I think people that have parents that are, have Alzheimer's and dementia, <clears throat> they become very sad and very despondent about the whole thing. And it really shouldn't be that way. Because what we're looking for is recognition. What we're looking for is for accolades, for praise. And that's not why we do things. We should do them just because it's the right thing to do. You know, the Torah teaches us everything. When Moshe came down from the mountain, he broke the first set of tablets. They didn't sweep them up and throw them away. What they did with the broken tablets is they took the broken pieces and they put it inside the ark that Moses made. And that ark would go three days ahead of the Jews in the desert, kill all the snakes and scorpions, level out, level out the terrain to make it easier for them to travel. When they would go to war, to battle, they would take the broken luchos with them. They still, in fact, at the end, when they built the temple, both sets of luchos, both sets of tablets, the first set and the second set, were both in the ark. And it's important for us to know that the broken luchos, even though they were broken and the letters had flown back to heaven, were given the exact same respect and dignity as the second set of luchos that were whole. If you have someone who was a great scholar 
and then develops dementia, you do not give him any less respect because he has dementia than you did when he was whole and complete. Very important. The fact that that parent does not recognize you, which is difficult, doesn't mean the mitzvah stopped. It just means the mitzvah got tougher. And when something lefits hara agra, according to the difficulties, is a reward. When something gets harder, it doesn't mean you stop doing it. It means what you do is you do it even better. You push to do it the right way. My mother passed away some 30 years ago. And when she died, I was heartbroken. And one of the reasons was, the Arizal says that rather than try to do every mitzvah pristine, what a person should do is take one mitzvah. And do all the mitzvahs, we have to do them. But one mitzvah, one deed, you should choose and make that your special mitzvah. And for me, my mother was a Holocaust survivor, had me at a very young age, went through a great amount of difficulties. My mitzvah was honoring my mother. That was the mitzvah. And when she died, much too young, I was broken, just totally broken. The mitzvah that I wanted to major in was gone. And it hurt, it hurt deeply. But after the dust, so to speak, settled, I came to the realization the mitzvah didn't end. We believe that there's still a connection, even with those that have passed on, that the dead inherit from the living. So when you do a mitzvah, that parent that's in heaven gets part of the reward for what you've done. I always call it, I always say my mother's in Florida and I can't go see her, so I send UPS. And I try to do good deeds in her honor. So we give charity. We take, do good deeds, we, things that we may not have done in, that, in the honor of a, a deceased parent. Because the truth is, when we bury our, our loved ones, we really haven't buried them. What we've buried is the vehicle they use to go through this world in. They still live. Because the soul is eternal. So your connection to that soul is eternal. And this is the reason why we believe in going to a cemetery and praying at the, de at the graves of not only tzaddikim, righteous individuals, but also our parents, to ask them to intercede with God. I know my mother drives God crazy <laughs> if he's not treating me right. It makes them have no doubt about it whatsoever. And we always say that when someone passes away that we have an advocate in heaven for that will, will, will fight for us, so to speak. So it's important to remember, to love your parents when they're here and, and know how lucky you are. And even though, and we all do, sometimes it feels like an inconvenience, you need to know, you need to understand what a great mitzvah it is. And if it wasn't a mitzvah, der heretz kadmel the Torah. Being a good person precedes Torah. It's the proper thing to do when someone, when someone shows you so much love and so much dedication. And it's interesting, when we're born, they're the adults, so to speak, and we're the little children. And many times, by the time it's all said and done, they're the little children and we're the adults. It's hard to get into this world, it's hard to get out. But, since we can't honor God what God tells us, love your parents, treat them well, and I will count it as if you did it to me. For those of us, for those of you that are fortunate enough to still have parents, call them. You know, there's, it doesn't cost much. If you can't see your parents, at least call them every day. That everyone can do. Just call. Say hello. And if they do have dementia, make sure they're being taken care of the way you would want to be taken care of you or them. But everyone can call. Everyone can think about the ways to make their life and their existence in this world just a little bit nicer. And the truth of the matter is it's its own reward. Again, may God bless you all. Again, that we do the right things, that we see the right things, and we show proper respect when, to who and those that knows that it's due to, and that's especially our parents. God bless and be well, and thank you for coming, and enjoy your treasure. Thank you.